Welcome back to a very special episode. Recently, the local pizza place in town graciously donated a non-functional mini fridge to our channel, admitting that it turned on but didn't get cold. Now typically we favor shorter videos, so I've included some timestamps below. Feel free to skip around with the understanding that this is a foundational video, which contains critical troubleshooting tests that should not be avoided. With that out of the way, let's get started. While not essential, acquiring or recreating an electrical schematic of your refrigerator may be helpful. You on? Yep. Nice. Yeah, let's try it out. Using a systematic approach, we powered on the refrigerator and noted oh. that both fans fired up. So it turns on. Is there a light? The overhead light didn't light up, but there was no bulb in place. We know this fan's running. It's blowing air. Yeah. But it's blowing this room temp air, not cold. But did not blow appreciable cold air. Something keeps clicking. Hmm. This points us toward the compressor and its circuitry. Let's remove the back panel for a closer look. This fan's running. That's the, uh, the yeah. evaporator coil fan. So the inside blower circulation fan and then this cooling fan is still running. So those parts work. Something's clicking over here. Yeah, what's that it's clicking? like clicking on it, trying to start. I think it's trying to start the uh, compressor. And that really isn't vibrating at the all. The compressor not vibrating is an indicator that it is not turning on, which could point to a couple potential problems. That could be a couple things. It can be a relay, it can be the capacitor, or it could be the thermostat as well. But it sounds like the thermostat's trying to kick it on, but it's not turning on. So. A common issue is a bad capacitor. We can start looking there and looking at the relay. Cause we think it's the compressor, just cause everything else is kind of running. This almost looks like a case of some kind. It is. So it's a case that's around your capacitor. And this is um, your compressor. This is your compressor cover. There's an overload in here. So that could be another issue. It could be the overload, but most likely not but we can look at that too, if it looks damaged. And this little cover here should just slide off. You just open this tab. And so underneath here, you have your overload, which is this device. That looks like it's fine. So that's similar to a fuse then? It's a, it's a thermal overload, so what those things do, it's a bimetal disc. If the compressor gets too hot, it'll flex one way and open up the circuit. The circuit yep. And that's the metal, the bimetal disc right there, that okay. device right there. Sometimes they'll have like a cover over this, so you can't even see those, so. Huh. Um, that might have been what was turning on and off of clicking. It, clicking if it was getting too hot and it couldn't start this. So it was, it was trying, trying to, to start up, it, but it couldn't, and it was overheating. These are stuck on there pretty good. Underneath, on the other side of the relay. There. So that's your capacitor. And this is just a capacitor holder. Before testing, always be sure to discharge large capacitors. Just shorting those two terminals together discharges it. You can turn it to the capacitor setting there. Now you're in ohms, so you have to get it to the correct. If you keep hitting this, it goes back to ohms, but there it's in farads, so that's mm -hmm. capacitance. And then you just measure. Sometimes it takes a while to charge up the capacitor, but this looks like it's not even charging, so it's overloading it. 
So it's most likely the capacitor here. This reading indicates that the capacitor has lost its ability to effectively maintain a charge. And then so I bought a replacement which has the same specs. You always want to make sure you get at least the right voltage or higher. This is 165 volts, this is 250 volts. So. While voltage can be higher on your replacement, the capacitance in microfarads should be identical. And so we'll take this one, we'll make sure it's discharged. And we'll measure it. 193 microfarads is what it, should, it's what it is about. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> like right on. <laughs> yeah. At least we isolated one component and right. be broken. Yep. Uh, there could be more too, who knows. There could be more. The other part that could be broken is this relay. And to get that off is you pull that off the terminals. So there's your relay. And how these work, it's um, gravity. Um, and when this coil is energized, it sucks the magnet back up. You can kind of hear mm. there's a ferret coil, coil in there. So an easy way to measure this is to stick your meter in ohms. And this is normally level, plugged in. It's in this orientation. We have overload. Mm -hmm. Now when it would be energized, It goes back the other way. And it's loose in there right now, but you can tell it's touching it. But electronically, it would like pull it tight to that spot. So I don't think it, it still could be that, it's but- It's electromagnet or something. Electromagnet, yep. Yeah. Okay. That's a good sign, dude. It is. Nice. Oh, well, since we have this off, mm -hmm. we could just see if it's, a, if it's the compressor itself. Um, you get an easy way to do it is just to check the resistance of the windings. So the sum of two of the windings will equal the sum of one of our readings. So that's an easy way to measure it or look at it. So like, let's just say we have that terminal and this terminal, we get 12 ohms. This terminal and this terminal, we get 9.8. So 9.8 and what was the other one? 12. 12. And then between these two, 2.6. So 2.7, 2.6 plus 9.8. 9.8 equals 12. About 12, yep. And there's a tear on these, uh, about 0.1 on here. So, so that's, that actually looks good. Yeah, it does. Like the compressor probably is okay. 2.6 on that one. Uh -huh. 12.2 on that one, and 9.8 there. Another uh, thing you could do with this is just measure them all to ground, just to make sure none of your windings are shorted to ground. And just measure between all of these. Open, open, open. And then these two. So that top one is what? Is the one that goes to the overload here. Oh, okay. I just had to put that one on first because this one actually helps push that one in further. I'm just going to replace, lay these caps next to each other. I don't see any positive or negative here. Which that's kind of weird actually. It is, it is <laughs> weird. Was this cap specifically made for this refrigerator or not necessarily? Not necessarily. Because they look so similar. Yeah, it's a common one. Oh, so they is. make a lot of them. It's a common issue, so it's kind of funny though they turn it sideways the other way. You don't want these to short, so like if you would do this, you don't want them touching. Right. Let's see the way you got those terminals. That thing's in the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect. 
make sure that we didn't come loose. I suppose we can measure the uh, yeah, we should measure to make sure. the capacitance in there. Yeah, because that was a lot of pulling of wires and maybe shorting stuff. Yeah, I don't want to make sure it's oh, 194. Dead on. Well, this was on the bottom of the relay. The non-taped? The non-taped one. That's back on there. This one was on the other side of the relay. It's kind of like a cheap terminal block they put on here. They, all these are the same connection here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all crammed together. So this sits right in here. That's like it's home. So that overload is right here. It's setting and pushing on this and it measures two things. It measures the heat from the compressor and it also measures the current going through the wire. There's a wire that goes behind that overload and if that gets hot too hot from it trying to start the compressor, it'll, it'll trip that overload too. Making sure that the compressor is level, let's take it for a test run prior to reassembly. That fan's still going. Oh, that, that's vibrating a little more now. The compressor is it's a tiny bit. You can feel it actually. Well, if I'm not hearing that click. No, it's not clicking anymore. Well, we've been gone jets, trying to jet skis. Yeah. How's she looking? Oh, dang. 45? It's cold in there. Whoa. I don't right. think we need to even do the tap. Do the tap. Okay. While encouraged by the refrigerator's ability to now cool, we were underwhelmed by its ability to achieve the ideal refrigerator climate. Let's start by cleaning the condenser coils, which will improve heat exchange. While heavy debris removal appears visually dramatic, it didn't improve the refrigerator's temperature. Well, we have a tap if we want to do that. <laughs> While generally recognized as a closed system, all refrigerant, be it an air conditioner or a refrigerator, will still slowly leak over time. Most units, including this one, is not equipped with the necessary hardware to recharge this lost refrigerant. That's where we come in. We'll briefly go over the process here, but I'll provide a link in the upper right hand corner and in the description below to our more in-depth installation. Yeah, we can put it there. So a closer view we've identified on the suction line, a spot that will fit the tap. Pop in there. Placement here should give us access to the valve without obstructing the ability to close the rear panel. Now, it's important to secure these three set screws as the tapping process of this suction line is permanent. Yep. So, should this be all hooked up before you tap it or no? No, it doesn't have to be. So, this is going to put the pin into the, into the line. Um, and we do need to have this plugged in, right? Yep. Right? Yep. And then I'm going to put the adapter on. So we buy this R12R134A. Uh, Verify the appliance is coolant type. This unit requires R134A refrigerant. So now you got to open it up, right? Yeah. So 
So does that that does have PSI on it? it does. Mu's only five. So then we tighten it back down, right? Yep. that run for a moment and if you'd like to help us out here at the channel please consider checking out my beautiful novel <laughs> discarded horse feathers available at all major online retailers how's she looking oh we're at 35 degrees right now very nice dude yes. <laughs>